Good morning, class. Good morning, Miss Frizzle. Today we're taking a surprise field trip. Where? Where? That's not important. We're going to study microbial succession. Greetings. I am Dr. Alexander Pride, checking in from the moon. Well, microbial succession is the selection and development of microbial populations in natural systems. What that means is that in a particular environment, the initial population lives, breathes, and uses resources. In time, the population becomes self-limiting, the use of all of the nutrients, gases, and living space in that area. Other members of the population are able to thrive now that the conditions are changed. This new population further alters the environment, and it leads to its own demise, and thus a different dominant population emerges. Thank you. Wait, Ms. Frizzle, how do we study microbial succession? The best way to study microbial succession is through a Winograsky column, and that's where we're going today. Inside a Winograsky column. That's the bus now. Come on, class, let's go. Seatbelts, everyone. Please let this be a normal field trip with a friend. No way. Cruising on down Main Street, you're relaxed and feeling good. Next thing that you know, you're seeing. Octopus in my neighborhood, surfing on the sign way. It's a wild ride. Come on, ride right on the magic school bus. Buckle up, Arnold. Get back? Why do I have a sneaking suspicion? Justin, I was absent that day. Can you explain what a Winograsky column is? Sure. The Winograsky column demonstrates microbial succession and how it affects the environment. It helps us learn about me metabolic diversity of prokaryotes, observe the cycling of mineral elements, and discuss discovering how microbes occupy specific niches depending on tolerance and requirements. First, we put a damp paper towel in the bottom of the tube. Then we put six inches of fresh soil and enough water to make the soil slightly damp. We seal the column and let it sit for three months, and now we can observe the changes. This is the bottom of the Winogradsky column. The paper towel adds cellulose to promote rapid microbial growth. At the bottom, the oxygen is depleted and anaerobic organisms thrive. Through anaerobic respiration, organic substrates are degraded to carbon dioxide. Some of the organisms that grow at the bottom are DeSilva Rubio and Clostridium, which produce hydrogen sulfate. The H2S diffuses upward where it's used by other organisms. I'm Dr. Alexander Pride. Here I am again. Except this time I'm not in space anymore. I'm in a Winogradsky column. This thing. The diffusion of H2S upward enables anaerobic photosynth photosynthetic bacteria to grow. You can observe these changes by examining the bands of different colors, such as a green sulfur bacteria zone and a purple sulfur bacteria zone. These type of bacteria get energy from the sun and produce mo more sulfur which is recycled by the dysuphilibria below. Towards the top of the mud phase, algae and other aerobic phototrophs are present. These organisms are responsible for the green and orange color that you may see. Anaerobic phototrophs are microorganisms that do not use oxygen to breathe, but use the sun to make food. They are still present to a large extent in the mud phase, meaning that there is more room for expansion of the colonies. The top of the column is the aerobic zone, which means that oxygen is present. Three different types of organisms reside here. The sulfur oxidizing bacteria gain energy from the H2S and make organic matter from the CO2. Therefore, they are chemoautotrophs. Photosynthetic cyanide bacteria grow in the upper zone as well. They oxygenate much of the water. Finally, the sheet head bacteria are aerobic organisms that divide and create new colonies rapidly. Class, we can summarize today's trip. Justin? Well, the Winograsky column is a classic demonstration of the metabolic diversity of prokaryotes. The column represents the microbial succession, which is the selection and development of microbial populations that take place in the entire world. In the Winograsky column, we find all four basic life strategies chemoheterotrophs, photoheterotrophs, photoautotrophs, and chemoautotrophs. The column also enables us to see how mineral elements like sulfur are cycled in natural environments. That's all for today.